now we're going to try to answer the question as far as how do we automate and generate that batch on a daily basis and how do we program inside page 500 to as far as what items that you need to count on daily basis and it does every day and in the schedule it automates the email notification to the certain people that here are the items that you need to count so we'll be we're going to be answering to those questions today with this presentation uh, we have created this program called uh, inventory cycle count planner and it runs from the menu uh, first, I would like to mention that this program has been developed uh, inside for Sage 500. Uh, it is not modifying any existing program. What it does, it pulls the data from Sage tables uh, as far as the inventory part goes, and it creates at the end of the day a uh, physical count, uh, phys a physical count entry program. It freezes the items. So if you have any customization. Uh, this could be installed without any problem. It's not, it's not overriding any existing program. Uh, so here I'm going to be selecting the warehouse. As I select the warehouse, it pulls the data into my uh, little grid in the middle that it shows me how many inventory items I have in this uh, Rialto warehouse. Uh, I have a couple of options of the filtering. I can filter by the finished goods, assembled kits, and also the raw materials. So technically, I can have uh, two separate schedules for one warehouse to do cycle count. So let's say there's a team who will be focusing on the raw materials, then there will be a team who's focusing for the finished goods and raw materials, assembled kit. You can separate them and create a separate uh, a cycle count uh, program. Uh, as you select the item, the inventory gets loaded into this middle grid. Uh, this middle grid is like, uh, works like an Excel file. You can put your filters in here, and it will filter down to the item. The goal of this program mainly is to tell the system how many times throughout the year you would like to count the item and uh, based on that, the system will generate daily counts and will send an email notification. So for me to filter, I can start typing an item. I can filter by the item. Starts with automatically as I type in, it brings the items. And as you see, like every first time that as soon as I entered my Rialto warehouse, it loads the data. We have the we have the one field called YCC, yearly cycle count code. All this information right now is set to be minus one. So when you implement the system, all of your inventory items will be flagged as minus one. That means that those items are not participating into a uh, cycle count program. As we go through the process, we can update them to any interval that we would like to. Uh, and we can also set to zero. Zero has a special meaning that uh, you go to your inventory and you decide that there are items that you never want to count and you can flag them to be zero. Uh, all, these are the update features that are on the top. I will show you now how to update the items. And uh, on the bottom portion of that uh, of the screen, we can designate and put the email addresses of the people who are going to be notified when this program runs. Uh, you can schedule the program to run on a daily basis. There is a scheduler that will open up now, and this will allow us to uh, create a schedule on that SQL server, which the job will run at any time you would like to. We usually do it 2 a.m. It will run on the back end. It will generate the physical count program, and it will send the email to the designated people who are responsible for the count. So now I'm going to use the cost uh, of the items and assign all of my 100 items into the cycle counts uh, program interval. So like I can go quickly. The grid is uh, pretty flexible, as I've shown you. It's working as a filter. You can also go and say, OK, I would like to see only the minus ones in my case. And I'm going to filter by the unit cost. And I can highlight the items. Like just like in the Excel file, you scroll down by the arrow down, and I select all the items up to $1,500. Uh, 
and I assign them to be counted four times a year. As I go assign the items to the four times a year, it moves the ten items from my list and put into this category. It's telling me that I have uh, items that I'm going to be counting four times a year. So using the same uh, schema, I can go and continue assigning the items from uh, now up to $200. Uh, using the cost, obviously, you can use the, uh, the cost of goods sold, gross margin, heat, the quantity sold fields that are available. So for this demonstration, I'm using the cost. Uh, average cost field. So now I'm going to say that all these items are going to be counted uh, three times a year. And uh, I'm going to continue in my list. I'm going to say all the items up to $50 I need to count two times a year. And then the rest of the items I'm going to count uh, once a year, $50 and less. So instead of clicking on uh, moving my arrow down and highlighting the items, I can click also on the corner of the grid. It will select the entire grid for me. And I can just go in here and say, OK, I would like to count these items once a year. So as, you, as you've seen, like in within a Five ten minutes. I went through using the cost, and I categorized all my all of my items through the cycle counts to be counted four times a year, three times a year, two times a year, and once a year. Uh, you could use all the fields that are available here in the grid for that purpose. Uh, as, as you as you see here, there are a couple of other there are a couple of other fields that I would like to talk about. Uh, one of them are called force count next time. So if I select one or two items and I highlight force count next time, it will flag the item to be counted on the next morning. So this is a helpful feature in terms when you know that there is a discrepancy in the, for this item and you do not want to wait until the end of uh, until the time for this item to be counted and uh, you want to resolve that problem now. So you can push this button and next morning this item will end up into your cycle count. Uh, the same way you can undo your force count. Let's say you set up the item, you can reverse that as needed. Um, the other option is hold. Let's say that uh, there are some items that you are having a problem with and you do not want to do cycle counts for those items you can go ahead and put the items on hold and they will not show up on your uh, cycle count program. And uh, uh, we have some other options as well. Uh, if you would like permanently to stop a cycle count for whatever reason, then the status here is active. You can switch it to inactive. And as a result, it will stop sending out the emails to the people to count the item. It will stop generating the physical count entry program. Uh, the same way, we also have exception days where you can go and program the days that are holidays or vacations. And uh, this way, when the time comes in, it will not generate, uh, it will skip those days. It will not generate any uh, uh, physical count for, for the users. Uh, some options that are here are also available for us. Uh, when it creates a batch, we can say to set count quantity to be the same as pro a freeze quantity. This is an option. You can turn it on and off. Uh, when it generates the count, you can tell the system where to include the zero on hand uh, items. So let's say that it's time for us to, co to count the uh, gateway item that I'm highlighting here. And that item has only uh, that item has zero quantity on hand. Do you want the system to continue pushing this item into the count sheet or not? The other option is rollover YCC count from large to small. So in my example, where I have uh, four different categories, I have only ten items. I'm going to need to count four times a year. And we're telling the system if I'm done with these items, which I'll be done in ten days. Do you want the system to go and pull an extra item from the other count 
and that way to maintain the number of items that needs to be counted each day. As, as a result right now, I have four items that I'm going to be counted each day throughout every day. And uh, if we do this, then uh, it will maintain uh, that number of items that you need to count. So this is helpful when you are done with counting the most expensive items throughout the year many times and then uh, you just want your warehouse people not to be uh, idle. They can just go and uh, to count uh, some other items on time, uh, on uh, more items to be counted uh, versus uh, less. Uh, so right now, uh, obviously, that the schedule is set up to be running at 12 a.m. We also have an option here to say generate the batch. So. If I push this button, generate the batch, it's going to go and do the following. It will go create the batch uh, for us inside the physical count entry program. So um, then we can go to the standard program. So now if we go to uh, process physical inventory screen, There is a batch that just got created uh, as a result of the button that I pushed. You would not normally push that button. This is uh, mainly for testing purposes and also like on demand if you would like to create a physical count, uh, invent, uh, physical process, physical inventory uh, screen. Uh, that's an option there, but in reality, the program runs uh, in the background. So you can set it up the time by schedule. So as you see now, that if I go now to the enter count, the items that's going to be there are, are here. It will show by the bin location because MOS 500 supports multi-bin. For all the items that uh, I have selected, it pushes into this program. So at this point, if you're using the scanner solution that Sean was showing, what you need to do is select the batch number 20 and you will have the items into your handheld and you can do the counts and verifying the information. So this is, a, this is all great when you generate the cycle count and uh, the goal of this obviously to eliminate the end of the year uh, expensive physical count process. But I would like to point out that we also have a, an audit log kind of a, a data uh, tool that you can we, we developed that you can see throughout the year how many times each item has been counted, whether there was a discrepancy or not. We will lo we are logging all that information and we're showing into this uh, explorer view. So here you can put the time time uh, uh, you can put the the date. Uh, as your filter by post date, for example, to see from the period four to period six how many items I counted. And on the bottom, it tells me the number of items that has been counted. I can quickly drag and drop the items into here, and I can see how many times each item has been counted. And if I want to drill down into those items, I could see that this item has been counted in two different days and there is no uh, discrepancy happen. Uh, if there are any items that have discrepancies, that you could see that there's a unit cost and the transaction amount. If I click on that, I could see where the discrepancy happened on the bottom of the screen as far as what bean and what uh, the lot number or what serial number has been uh, has that issue when you did the count. So we are giving the full visibility throughout the, from the time you start implementing the system uh, to the end uh, of uh, the end of the year. You can run the report and see all the information that you need um, from from the system. Um, to implement the system, you really don't need to wait until the end of the year or wait until the month end. Uh, as soon as it gets installed, you go categorize the items into different categories per your uh, requirement, then it's ready to go. 